All righty, it is 2.05 on the dot. We are going to get started. So thank you everyone for participating and joining today's webinar on Chambers Roles and Workplace Wellness. We have two fabulous panelists with us today, Joe Hurd of the Blair County Chamber and Matt Beatty of the Greater Des Moines Partnership. So I'm just going to give a quick couple of housekeeping items. And then I will introduce our speakers, go into what workplace wellness is and why chambers are starting to care about it. And then you're going to learn from our two panelists. Um, I'm going to ask that all participants hold questions until the very end where we will have about 15 minutes to ask questions. Um, so thank you, everyone. My name is Emily Counts. I'm the Community Advancement Coordinator here at ACCE. Uh, with us today, we have Joe Hurd of Blair County Chamber. Joe Hurd is the CEO and President of the Blair County Chamber of Commerce and has been with the Chamber since 1997. Joe is active within his community as a member of the Rotary Club, a board member of the Central Pennsylvania Community Foundation, and when he isn't busy with at the Chamber or with his or in his community, he spends time with his wife and three kids. And following Joe, we have Matt Beatty, who is the director of the Des Moines Corporate Games and Iowa Senior Games for the Iowa Sports Foundation. As an Iowa State University graduate, Matt spent over 10 years in the parks and recreation world around the state before returning to the greater Des Moines area. Matt and his wife, Wendy, live in Aikene with their two beagles. So, now that we have introductions out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So just so that everyone is on the same page, I just wanted to quickly go over what workplace wellness is. So according to the CDC, workplace health programs are a coordinated and comprehensive set of health promotion and protective protection strategies implemented at the work site that includes programs, policies, benefits, environmental support, and links to the surrounding community designed to encourage the health and safety of all employees. While that sounds like a very intimidating definition, what it really looks like is making sure that water is available to employees, subsidizing gym membership, um, having a flexible schedule that will allow employees to go to the gym or take an hour to go exercise during the workday. So it can be really simple. And here are some of the facts. Um, every year, employee illness and injury costs U.S. businesses over $225 billion due to loss in productivity, and these programs do work to help, sub help offset those costs. For every dollar spent on employee wellness programs, employee medical costs fall about an average of $3.27, and absenteeism costs fall about $2.73. And part of the reason why these medical costs are falling so much is because 60% of the country is either overweight or obese, which costs the U.S. over $1.4 trillion in healthcare productivity at work. And there are more than benefits to that. There's benefits of exercising by allowing employees to participate in this. So I'm going to stop talking and let the real experts share what they know. So we're going to hand it over to Joe. You ready, Joe? I think I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Pull up the presentation. Yes, I'm um, looking for the. Uh, it's at the bottom of your screen. At the PowerPoint. Uh, yeah. So it should be at the bottom of your screen at the little red P or orange P. Oh, okay. Uh, 
so much for technology. I'm not. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm there. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, our workplace wellness committee was uh, one that we created our workplace wellness program actually in 2012. Uh, I can tell you that we did not need uh, another committee. Uh, we already had 28 committees or subcommittees or roundtable groups in our chamber. We're a chamber of uh, approximately 1,100 businesses. But uh, we had a number of businesses that uh, had indicated to us that, uh, that wellness issues were things that they were having some difficulty with uh, attendance, of course, and uh, just a variety of those concerns. So uh, we started uh, uh, our board of directors uh, submitted, I guess, to a presentation from a couple of our business leaders. And uh, the facts that uh, were part of that uh, presentation to the board uh, were that our county was considered among the worst uh, in Pennsylvania in terms of overall health. Uh, of the six, 67 counties in Pennsylvania, we were the 64th healthiest, uh, which is nothing to brag about, of course, and, uh, and I guess I felt sorry for the other three uh, that were actually below us. But absentee rates among uh, employees were very high, uh, insurance rates uh, that businesses were paying were much higher than the state average, and a lot of that was related uh, to, to wellness-type issues. Uh, few businesses had any sort of wellness programs or initiatives. The few that did uh, weren't really measuring outcomes all that successfully, so uh, even those programs weren't accomplishing uh, quite what they were intended to. Uh, healthcare providers were interested in providing guidance and preventative services to citizens of the county, but really had no way to reach them. And uh, that was another area where the providers really stepped forward uh, when we announced that we were trying to make some connections uh, with employers and, and uh, and providers, and uh, so that kind of fell together pretty quickly for us. And then that, and of course, businesses rely on the chamber to help them solve problems and save money. So uh, we like that, especially when we can actually deliver on what they need. As far as getting started, uh, you know, we formed a committee. Uh, and, you know, isn't that the way most chambers do things? We form committees. So uh, our committee initially consisted of representatives from healthcare facilities, people with backgrounds in employee wellness, human resources personnel from large companies and interested small business owners. Uh, and then we partnered, we're, we're fortunate to have an organization here called the Healthy Blair County Coalition, which was, uh, which was kind of formed as the result of uh, uh, the need to do community health assessments from our, uh, for our uh, healthcare providers. Uh, and so when that group started to uh, kind of gain some momentum, it became logical for us to look for ways to, to partner with them. The first thing that we did was we, uh, we put together uh, a program uh, called Wake Up to Wellness. And uh, this was, these were informational sessions that, uh, that usually were from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, businesses could come in and learn about different things related to uh, healthcare and, and health in the workplace. 
there were a lot of best practices opportunities for attendees uh, to share what they were doing. Uh, at the start, that wasn't a very in-depth discussion, as you can imagine, because not many employers were, were doing anything uh, in relation to, to health, the health of their employees. And uh, so far, we have had seven Wake Up to Wellness programs to date. We even had one that was entirely focused on mental health, uh, which was one of that was extremely well attended. So uh, we, I guess, have a lot more uh, issues than just uh, related to physical health. But that uh, that was one that we kind of threw in uh, at the last minute, and it turned out to be a terrific uh, program. Uh, we then kind of uh, started into a program that we call the Corporate Wellness Challenge. And uh, the way our, our uh, county is set up, we were able to, to kind of divide the county into thirds uh, because we have three hospitals in our counties. And each one of the hospitals is in, there's one in the northern part, one in the central part, and one in the southern part. So it became logical to create three different regions and uh, those regions then, the, they, the businesses in those regions then uh, would compete against one another uh, to see which employees of those businesses could lose the most weight uh, and body mass. And generally, uh, there were a lot of... Uh, incentives that were that were put in to get uh, employees in these different businesses motivated to do things and uh, at the end of this it, and it runs for three months at the beginning of each year from the beginning of January to the end of March uh, we determine a regional champion as well as an overall champion for the county uh, we award trophies uh, and uh, the employee groups that are winners get T-shirts and are, have uh, a luncheon set up for them to mark their accomplishments. And in 2018, we had 25 businesses that participated with 435 employees that lost a total of 3,421 pounds. This is actually a, a smaller number than uh, the previous two years. We we kind of dropped off a little, and uh, the previous year, in, in 2017, we actually had 38 businesses that participated, and the drop-off wasn't necessarily a lack of interest from, from the businesses, but uh, this program uh, has a, a lot of uh, need for volunteers uh, to be assigned to travel to different parts of the county to oversee, you know, the weighing of participants and a lot of the uh, uh, statistical information that comes uh, out of a program like this one. So uh, when a couple of our volunteers moved away, and I'm hoping they didn't move away because of this program, but uh, we had a little more difficulty than uh, uh, being able to handle uh, as many businesses as we had the previous year. So that's a situation that we're working on now uh, so that we don't have to turn any businesses away who want to be part of the program. Uh, on the horizon, uh, we're looking to uh, do a STEPS Challenge program. We uh, have looked into a, uh, a number of, of uh areas in the country that are doing these. Uh, we had talked to some people in Pittsburgh about one that has been very successful there, and uh, we're kind of weighing right now whether or not we uh, are going to be able to incur some of the expense of, of doing that, that program with them because it would have some, uh, some uh, fees involved because the program has already been established and uh, and they're willing to uh, kind of help us through that, but, a, but for, for a price. Uh, but this challenge we're looking at uh, as something that we would do in the fall, which would help bridge the gap 
uh, between our corporate corporate wellness challenges. Uh, the competitive aspect of uh, uh, that the challenge is, is already ingrained in the community uh, to the extent I think that the steps challenge uh, would be kind of easily easy to to uh, to implement and would gain momentum pretty quickly. And uh, so, as far as lessons learned. Uh, we found that the best recruiting tool for our workplace wellness program has been sharing the success stories from other local businesses. Uh, people want to see their people want to see their competitors doing something before they before they sign up to do something similar, and uh, we've seen evidence of that since we started this. Uh, we also learned that if a pro the program costs too much. Uh, businesses are not likely to participate. Uh, we've been fortunate that the corporate challenge participation was free of charge except for the cost of a, of a scale that each business needed to purchase so there was consistency in the way uh, people were weighed. And uh, the wake up to wellness events, uh, we generally kept that cost to about $10 a person. Uh, and that uh, didn't seem to be uh, cost prohibitive to anybody. Uh, we emphasize how important it is for all businesses to show that they genuinely care about the health of their employees. And I can tell you that employees are often very skeptical about things that their boss tells them are being done for their own good. Um, they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. And so this program has worked and now has gained a lot of credibility as a result of that. Uh, we also learned that it's important to constantly seek feedback. Uh, depending on what you're doing, much of it's likely to be trial and error. So uh, it's important to make your employees partners in the effort rather than just kind of doing something and dictating to them that this is how something's gonna be done. And uh, we learned to market in as many ways as possible, uh, obviously, the more people that see your efforts, the more likely they are to commit to getting involved. Uh, important to be creative or the programs will die a slow death. Uh, there is a tendency to be repetitive in what programs are offered and how they run. So uh, be as creative as you can be. And also constantly uh, recruit new members to the committee. Uh, committees as any of you who are involved with Chambers know can get stale very quickly. Uh, even if you don't completely turn over a committee, it's important to add new people on a regular basis because their input is very valuable. So that's all I have to say, and thank you very much for listening. All right. Thank you very much, Joe, for that presentation. And now we will go over to Matt. All right. Matt, you have the screen? Matt, I think you're muted. Oh, I'm still muted. You're right. <laughs> thank you. Thought I pressed the button. All right. Well, thank you uh, for uh, having me today to talk a little bit about the Des Moines Corporate Games. Um, I'll give you a little background on how the games came to be. Um, the Greater Des Moines Partnership had been hosting uh, an event called the Golden Circle Games in the Des Moines Metro for a long time. And um, it was a, kind of a one-day event for companies. And um, centered around some uh, just fun little games and a little more of a party focus type atmosphere. I, I believe it was on like a Friday afternoon type thing. And so the um, partnership was looking for something uh, a little bit more that was kind of uh, grounded in uh, overall health and wellness within its uh, uh, member organizations. And so um, uh, they uh, worked with us uh, with the Iowa Sports Foundation. We're a nonprofit group that specializes in running large scale uh, athletic events. And with the partnership being a direct connection to the business community, it really was a great combination um, for for both sides. <clears throat> so, uh, 
So um, kind of the purpose of the Des Moines Corporate Games is to promote physical activity, general physical fitness, and volunteerism to employees of Des Moines Metro businesses, municipalities, and government entities through competitive sports and recreational events, and provide companies with a platform to promote employee wellness, teamwork, and still company pride. Our first year in 2016, we had 30 companies and about 1,500 employee participants, and this event has grown very quickly. Uh, this last summer for 2018, we had 61 companies and nearly 9,000 participants. So um, it's been very popular throughout the metro, and uh, as we move into 2019, we're expecting that to continue to grow. So how the corporate games works is it is a uh, competition that runs um, basically through the summer, June 1st, July uh, 31st, and we divide the companies into divisions based on their general uh, company size, their employees. Um, for companies that reach outside the Des Moines area, it is only based on their employees within the metro, so those are the uh, numbers that they count when registering the company. Um, roughly 25 sports and events each year. Uh, they're all held on evenings and weekends. And the time commitments are generally two hours or less for each activity. It depends on the event, of course, but uh, we try to try to keep it so the time commitments are low, uh, so people you know want to come out and participate outside of the workday. Um, we do have a mix of event types. Uh, we offer uh, we try to do a balance. Uh, we feel that's very important to uh, really attract uh, all different employees, and uh, uh, we really try to have something for everyone. Um, we have events that are competitive, such as a track and field meet, uh, triathlon, duathlon, things like that. Um, we do uh, non-competitive events like yoga and a fitness walk. We also have a Zumba class that we do. Um, traditional events like basketball, bowling, and golf, and some non-traditional events like tug of war, dodgeball, and uh, trivia night. Um, all, and all these things are one time, so you don't come multiple times for any of these. You come to one one session. Uh, we do have uh, some com community-based events, um, such as our Blood Donation Challenge, and we work with uh, another nonprofit group in the Des Moines area called Meals from the Heartland to do some meal packaging for uh, sending out to different places. <clears throat> um, another event that uh, is really good that can be done from your desk, and this is how I say this really has something for everyone, is we have a uh, Burst Your Thirst Challenge, which is uh, an online hydration challenge that uh, promotes uh, um, proper hydration and healthy lifestyles, and with that, they just have to go online and record. Um, so people can do it right from their desk. So the corporate games is based on a point system. Um, there's three components of that system, and they are participation, uh, placement, and volunteerism. Uh, every event that we have um, has participation points. So uh, getting people out there is is uh, something we definitely reward people for, or reward companies for. Um, the competitive uh, events do have placing points for how you do in the competition. And then uh, we'd also have some volunteerism uh, component to it where the all the events pretty much require some volunteer help <laughs> for those. We, we have a small staff, of course. And so we ask companies when they register for the corporate games if they're interested in providing volunteers. Um, and many companies say yes. And so then we assign a volunteer spot to each company. And as part of that, then, um, the, we get lots of volunteers out. There's a lot of people that might not participate otherwise, but they enjoy being out and helping with some of the general needs, such as uh, uh, athlete check-in or scorekeeping, things like that. Um, a little bit on our timeline for how this all works is we start our marketing efforts in November and allow returning companies the first opportunity to register. Um, at the beginning of December, we do open registration to any company at that point. And during registration, we do a lot of direct kind of individual marketing to companies. Um, as you probably know, every company is a little different in who makes the decision on how to participate in the corporate games. And so our approach varies depending on the company, just a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, we also offer a series of webinars uh, during December, January, and February so that companies can learn more about the corporate games in detail. And those have become pretty popular and, and help lead to more questions and more interaction from the companies that are interested in participating. Um, as part of the corporate games, every company that registers uh, provides a liaison to our office that we call a company administrator. And this person is responsible for managing the corporate games from the company side and uh, we do encourage people to delegate responsibility. Responsibility. We don't want uh, anybody taking this on. Everybody has a full-time job on top of uh, doing these duties. And so most companies, I would say, have two to five uh, people that are 
acting as company administrators. Um, we do have a administrator meeting in early April. We, we stopped registering at the beginning of March. And so then in early April, we have this meeting where we get the company administrators together, uh, go into full detail about the game, um, talk about strategies for recruiting employees and getting people to participate. And then there's some networking time too there among the administrators, which is great. Um, after that administrator meeting uh, that we have in early April, we uh, allow employees then to start declaring their interest for events and the volunteer opportunities. <clears throat> the Des Moines Corporate Games is managed through a custom software that we developed specifically for the event called Corporate Games Manager. And this is really the backbone um, of the event, especially as it has grown. We need something to manage this uh, for the companies and on our side. Um, it's a one-stop shop for the employees and the company administrators, and uh, it's a great way for, for us as staff to be able to, to manage all the companies. Um, it really, and it really makes everything uh, function smoothly. Um, the cor corporate games manager allows employees to uh, sign up for events. They can uh, uh, list that they're interested in volunteering. Um, they can view news from our staff. We'll put some updates up there of things that are coming up. Um, uh, the companies can put uh, news for their employees as well up on that dashboard. And uh, the nice thing is, too, they can look right there and see if they've made a, a team roster or if they've been assigned to a volunteer task. Um, it's, it's a very simple system, especially for the employee. We don't want it to be something that they have to be trained on. Anybody can pretty much log in, and it's pretty self-explanatory from there and uh, nice and easy to use. On the company administrator side, um, the administrators have a lot more uh, functions uh, at their fingertips there and things that they can do. They can assign employees to team rosters, assign people to volunteer spots, uh, pull reports of um, employee interest, and they also have uh, options to manage the employees and um, their events as well, because not all employees have access to a computer during the workday. And so we've tried to set that up. The admin can help them out with that. Uh, we, they also can delegate more responsibility through here. We have a function called sport captains, and that's um, where someone might be in charge of a particular event, like a three-answer basketball team. And then that person can be the one to assign the team members to the roster and, you know, see all the contact information at that point so they can talk to them about schedules and that sort of thing. Uh, we started using Corporate Games Manager this summer. So it's, it was brand new this spring, and we had great reviews from our admins, um, very, very positive overall few suggestions for things to add, and we've uh, been working on that this fall, adding those uh, pieces in, and we're pretty excited about it. It's, it's very, uh, I think it's well-rounded now with every everything in there, as well as little things like email alerts. If you get added to a roster, you get an email telling you that you're on that team, so you don't necessarily have to go into the system to see that. Uh, during the corporate games, we do engage companies in several different ways. Um, weekly updates are sent out by email on Monday mornings to everybody who's in our system, and it gives a little recap of the previous week's events, what's coming up. Um, we try to post at least one picture of every event that was held, as well as the, the results in there for that event. And the open rate for these emails, we found, goes up as the summer goes on. And it's become a um, pretty important part to the corporate games, I think. It helps keep the games at the top of mind, you know, when people are in the office and they're talking about it. And so it just kind of further engages people that way and, and just increases participation naturally throughout the summer. Um, we also, on social media, we're publishing video and pictures at each event. We tag companies as much as we can whenever possible. Um, as you can see through the presentation, we, we definitely encourage companies to um, uh, offer employee t-shirts. Uh, that's a pretty big part, we think, uh, besides the fact that it helps um, people identify their coworkers at events if they might not know each other. Um, it's a nice photo op and shows a lot of pride in the company. And, and we've seen the companies love to share these photos on social media when we put them out there. Um, our company leaderboard is prominent on the Corporate Games uh, website. And this is where the, uh, the point system comes into play. It's cumulative as the uh, summer goes on. And so we make this uh, uh, points, uh, the leaderboard very visible. And we've always got the top three listed for every company division. And then they can go look at the full full layout on our on our results page as well. Um, and so we we just want that to be out there all the time so that people can really look and see how their company's doing. And and when we talk about those emails and you can see what links were clicked, the leaderboard is always the top one. <laughs> Everybody's looking to see how their company did. Um, 
Another another engagement tool we use as part of the awards is um, having gold, silver, and bronze medals for the top participants in our um, competitive events. And these are really popular. We get a lot of great pictures of people with them. Um, employees tell us they love to display them at the office. It makes the conversation starter sometimes with their coworkers. And we even have some companies that will do an internal competition um, for the most medals awarded by an employee. <clears throat> So all of these items together really do help shape the culture within the participating company. And we see results on this through our testimonials that we get at the end of the corporate games. We will send out a survey and we get a lot of uh, responses back and if they're willing to provide a testimonial to help with our marketing efforts. And so we get a lot of great feedback. Um, a lot of people just talking about the team building aspect, you know, networking with other companies. It's been really positive in that sense. Um, we even had one that I like to talk about where an employee, his, most of his interactions during the workday are not positive with his, with his coworkers if he has to interact with them uh, because of job duties, but the corporate games gives them a chance for positive interaction. So that's really nice to hear things like that. And of course, as I mentioned, we do feature these testimonials in our marketing tools. We post them on social media just to, so people can see the firsthand account of what the corporate games means. Uh, going through to our awards, um, at the end of July, uh, we do award the top companies in every division uh, with trophies that might be the top three in each division, might be the top five, depending on how many companies are in that division. The first place company does receive the Traveling Corporate Games Cup, and um, that one is, uh, you can see in the picture that it's a big cup. That's one of you in the row. And, um, they uh, have built cases so that they can uh, kind of display their awards prominently at the work site. Um, a couple of the events that I mentioned are outside of our point system, such as our blood donation challenge and the Meals from the Heartland Award. Um, we also uh, offer an award for the uh, most points earned with volunteers during the corporate games. And by offering some awards outside just the top few companies, usually these awards are given to companies other than those top companies. And so it's just another way to engage with those companies uh, reward the companies for their efforts during the, during the games and definitely helps bring them back to and make sure that they see some value in it. And going along with that, uh, in company retention, uh, that's always the most challenging part as I'm sure all of you have seen in different programs that you offer. Um, the, every company has different goals with its involvement. Some really want to be competitive and win that cup. Some just want to get employees out and doing something fun and get, getting to know each other. And so some of, some companies are more engaged than others, and some want to see some tangible results. And so we, we try to cater to everybody a little bit that way. Um, but one of the main factors getting companies to come back really is the service that they get from our office. Uh, we have constant communication during the games. So we, we don't necessarily handhold for the companies, but we do regularly communicate with our company admins, make sure they have the information they need, whether it be um, – Today's schedules are coming out for something. Go look on the website. Here, here's what's out today. You know, they, besides that weekly email I mentioned, there's a weekly admin email that comes out before the regular weekly email. So they get a little update on what's coming up, what deadlines are coming for certain things, just so they can keep it at top of their mind and um, don't have to, they can rely on us a little bit to help them uh, organize. Um, but also uh, we do have an admin toolkit that we offer that's on our website and it's got some important information uh, with dates and whatnot and roster sizes, that sort of thing. It also has rules and everything else, just kind of a quick place that they can look uh, for information um, without having to ask questions. And then we also have marketing materials in there too for um, helping to market the event to their employees. And so we, we try to provide all of that that we can and then put that on the website for, uh, for download and printing. <clears throat> Now, uh, for the uh, companies that want hard stats, um, we do have information on participation. Everybody who comes to a corporate games event does have to check in, and that's where we make sure everybody's uh, signed our waiver that we have that's part of the corporate games manager. And with that, we can also then track um, how many employees, who has been there to the event, and really uh, be able to give those back to the uh, um, companies after the game so they can see that. And in some cases, it's for health insurance. They use it as a, as a discount and things like that. So another thing that we're going to start um, this next year, now that we've been uh, going for a few years, is the ambassador program for the new companies. So we can pair them up with one of our veteran companies and the company admin. And just so they have someone they can go to if they have questions or looking for any tips or tricks or ways to really um, get their employees engaged. And uh, kind of finally on the uh, um, retention part is 
I think to maintain a variety of events, I think Joe talked about a little bit too, just uh, you don't want things to die a slow death. <laughs> and so it certainly can if you're doing the same thing over and over. So we're always evaluating the, uh, the events that, and uh, competitions that we offer. We change up dates when, when uh, we're able to, so that if somebody missed the, miss an event this year, next year, maybe they can do it because it's going to be on a different date. And so uh, we do try to do that. We, we've uh, dropped events that just don't work that well for Cobra Games, and we've added different events that we think will fit better into the, uh, into the setup. Uh, I mentioned trivia is a good one. We added it this summer, uh, something that's non-athletic, you know, and that was a big hit for people. And so we're always trying to, you know, make sure we reach all the different segments of the employee base. And that's, that's my presentation. So thank you. Thank you, Matt. All right. So we are going to go to question and answer time. Um, let me pull up that really quick. Oh, lovely. Um, so I do have a quick question already. Um, what was it? Um, let me try and pull it up. So this is for Matt. Can you talk about the fees for this software? Is it a license? Is it a licensing utilization fee or a fee per user? Sure. Um, we developed the software, <laughs> so we we paid a a company here to put it together for us. So we haven't. Um, been in the situation yet with the licensing on that. Uh, we have had some other groups. Uh, we're part of the Iowa Sports Foundation. We're part of the uh, National Congress of State Games. And we've got some other organizations that are working with their local chambers or with their CVBs to look at events like this. And so it's come up as a possibility to license out what we're using. Um, and so we're we're still working on that a little bit, but there are opportunities like that for this type of software. Um, but we did we did create it ourselves, so our we we paid the development fees, and for us it's just a, kind of the one time fee, of course, and then our maintenance on our website. All right. So, um, if you have a question now, uh, please. Chime in if you have a question. Trying to make sure everyone's unmuted. Um, I have a question. Go oh, ahead. Can everyone hear me? Okay. This is Julie. I'm from the Coral Springs Regional Chamber in Coral Springs, Florida. Um, we're trying to do a workplace wellness um, event with our local hospitals. Um, is it limiting to choose one hospital to have the location at, or should it be a general location where multiple hospitals can come and participate? We're trying not to be um, exclusionary. Matt, Joe, do you have an answer for that? Uh, this is Matt. I, I don't know that I necessarily <laughs> have an answer for this one in particular. Um, you know, if there's more opportunities to do more locations, I think that's always a good thing. Um, we, we definitely try to, at least with what we're doing, it's a little different format, of course, but we're always trying to do go to different areas around the metro, work with different partners, and so just to kind of uh, make it a little more inclusive, too. Okay. Um, I have another question. Uh, are either of your CVB or Main Street offices involved in the wellness initiative? Uh, Joe, you on? Matt, do you have an answer for that? Um, I can say with ours, uh, with the Greater Moines Partnership, they're kind of the umbrella organization for all the chambers in the Des Moines Metro. 
So that's really the, the involvement at that level, and they do kind of push things down to the local chambers. Um, we have looked at, with the Iowa Sports Foundation, looked, um, we're adding an event in eastern Iowa, and we're working with um, the chamber organizations in uh, the Iowa City and Cedar Rapids area. It's a kind of a one combined metro uh, that we're looking, we're adding that event um, at next year. And, and we've looked long term at possibly other options around Iowa to um, run a corporate games type event um, that maybe is more of a can thing that the uh, the local chamber or, um, or the rural Main Street or something could could implement in their community. All right. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, I have another one for you. Uh, what is the biggest challenge you face when you are engaging businesses? I w this is Matt. I would say from from our side, uh, especially not being necessarily connected directly to the businesses, <laughs> that uh, sometimes it's hard to get the right decision maker. Um, and that can vary as to where that where that comes from with you know businesses of different sizes. Um, just to get to talk to the right person to uh, kind of describe what the corporate games is. Uh, I think Joe had alluded to earlier. Some of it is kind of from word of mouth, and we definitely have a lot of that. Um, I would say, other than that, just the engagement is we do have to have someone willing on the company's side, so an employee who once once they are part of the corporate games. We do have to have that initiative. Um, we we can't really push it to the employees directly. We need to go through our our conduit there through the company administrator. And if you have someone who really doesn't want to do it, it um, it's not going to it's not going to work very well. And so that's that's a big part is making sure you have some people engaged on the company side uh, to start with, and then from there it's it's almost guaranteed to have at least some success. Right. Joe, do you have anything to say about that? All right. Uh, next question. Are there any particular data points you use in your pitch to employers? Can you ask that again? Um, are there any particular data points you use in your pitch to employers? Uh, I can tell you that some of the statistics we have about local health uh, have been all the real data points that we've needed to get uh, to get people interested and I, I think that's uh, that's an important thing to have those data points available to you uh, when you are trying to recruit businesses to uh, you know to be part of your program so uh, the facts you know kind of speak for themselves in in a lot of the uh, challenges that, that many of our businesses have had. Okay, um, I have another question for you uh, both. What types of businesses would you recommend for involvement in wellness, at least to kick these programs off? You kind of cut out there for a second, Emily. Can you repeat that? Yeah, yeah sure. What businesses would you recommend reaching out to for involvement in wellness programs, at least to kick these programs off? Well, I can speak, uh, I guess, directly for our event that we're, our corridor corporate games is what's going to be called that's uh, starting next summer. Um, we're working right now to, you know, get it off the ground. And so our big thing was reaching out to companies that we were aware of that are very active, um, that have good wellness programs. Their workplace culture is one that they like to, to, uh, 
show show off to people, you know, on social media, things like that, uh, just the ways that they're looking to recruit employees. And so um, that's been something that we kind of, you know, go for those companies first because they're uh, usually considered leaders in the uh, in the wellness initiatives in, in the area. And so um, we want to get them on board and, and committed and, and that helps uh, get other businesses on if they see it's you know something that that, that company is interested in that maybe they should be too and and so we've we've started to do that and we're working on some uh some marketing with uh, one of those companies that's going to start helping us push some things out too yeah certainly it's logical to try to get your larger businesses on board because a lot of them uh already have a little bit more in the way of resources to to do some of the things that uh that you might like to do to, to to kick off a program, but we've been we've been very fortunate too uh, that we've been able to recruit small businesses to get involved in in these programs. About 85% of our membership are small businesses with 50 employees or fewer, and so it's essential that if we're going to make this as broad as we feel it needs to be, uh, that we go out and 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 get the small businesses uh, engaged as soon as we can. But, uh, you know, probably an, if you're just starting out, it, it probably is uh, the best strategy to try to get that uh, that group of large employees uh, on your side. I'll, I'll echo what Joe just said there, too. Our uh, our main, main growth with the Des Moines Corporate Games is in the smaller companies. That's the ones who really, I think, really get a lot out of it. Sometimes the larger ones, it's a little disconnected. Um, so they, they offer it as a wellness opportunity, but they don't get the buy-in with as many people, the percentage of people as small companies do. And so getting those large companies involved is important for kind of recognition and people uh, knowing that the event's out there. But um, getting those small companies involved is really important. All right, does anybody else have any more questions? There have been a lot of good ones so far, so keep them coming. I have a question for Joe. Yes. Uh, Joe, how many employees does your chamber have, and how, uh, what type of staff attention, you know, half-time, quarter-time, full-time, do you need uh, to uh, manage uh, your programs in health and wellness? Well, we have eight full-time employees, and uh, so each employee other than our receptionist uh, has some type of of uh, committee committees that they oversee. Uh, the workplace wellness program is a, is a committee that I am the staff person for. Uh, so I'm the one who sets up the meetings and uh, and follows through with what comes comes out of the committee. But uh, if you have the good volunteers that you really need for this program, these type of programs to be successful. Uh, the staff time commitment is not nearly as extensive as as you would think that it is and uh so uh i i i i like your question because i think for chambers that are not uh that don't have 30 or 40 employees that they can you know commit two or three people to uh you know a program like this one uh it does become a little bit of a challenge to balance everything out but it's it's worked out well, and this has become a priority for us because it's turned into a really great retention uh, vehicle for us. A lot of businesses that uh, we always wondered whether they were going to renew their membership, uh, a program like this one can be one that uh, that really keeps uh, keeps a business as part of your chamber. Thanks, Joe. I, yeah, keeping members is always important to Chambers. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. your appreciate your input on that. Thank you. I, all right. I think we have time for one last question. All 
All right, so I have Rich. one. Go right ahead, Rich. <laughs> um, Joe and Matt, um, in terms of this, the, your two programs, what role does your city play with you in them? Well, I, I can tell you, it, we're we're a countywide chamber, so uh, we're a little bit. Uh, we only have one city, uh, and in fact, it's it's Altoona, Pennsylvania. And I know that uh, Matt has an Altoona city very close to him as well. But uh, yes, we do. Uh, I think that uh, our communities have kind of. Uh, really helped us to uh, they've made them made so many resources available to us because i think they see the value of what we're doing they they understand that uh if the business community is strong and the businesses located here uh have you know uh genuine concern for employees uh and uh, the health of a community is certainly contingent uh, on the, the efforts of, of uh, you know, a, a strong business community. Uh, we, we've gotten great support uh, from all, from not only our city, but from all the communities in our county. I'd say the same as uh, Joe, really, as far as the commitment, it's been very good. Um, when we first started out with the Des Moines Corporate Games, uh, we went to, we put, got all the local park and recreation directors in a room <laughs> just to uh, kind of talk about the event, because obviously um, with what we're doing, we need facilities and space, and uh, we kind of pitched the idea, and everybody was immediately on board. Um, just love the idea. We don't work with everybody directly. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. It just depends on what facilities we need at the time. But a good example would be with the city of Des Moines, uh, Parks and Recreation. We set up a facility agreement with them for the first, we did a three-year agreement for our first three years of the corporate games. And the city also participates as an organization. And so um, they, in after the this first three years, which was up this summer, um, immediately my contact was uh, was telling me we need to get together to talk about next year. They were excited about it. They're excited about about it as a participant, and they're excited about the fact that we're getting a lot of people out to their facilities that might not come out otherwise. And so um, it's a great way to for them to show off uh, the facilities they have. And we found that with our other uh, partners in the Metro as well, um, even when it comes to the YMCA and things like that. So it's been, I think for the for the city and the community, it's been a very good thing there too. Thank you. All right, well, that is about time. Uh, thank you all for participating. Um, there are a couple of housekeeping items. There are a number of education, talent, and development resources and supports that can be found on ACCE's website or by talking to a team member at ACCE. Uh, please feel free to contact me. You can reach me at ecounts at acce.org if you have any questions on the slide deck. Um, this webinar will be up on ACCE's YouTube page so that you can revisit at any time. And also, I'd like to end by thanking Matt and Joe for sharing about their wonderful program. So thank you both so much. Welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, I will let you all go. I hope you have a your holiday season. And happy holidays, everyone. Thank you, Emily. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Anytime. Thank you, Emily.